Hello, Lena. Welcome to Mr. Quaker's Teachers. In this lesson, I'll be analyzing Thomas Hardy's poem, He Never Expected Much. It's one of the poems in the IGCSE stroke GCSE um, anthology for 2023 to 2025. Um, I'll speak about the themes in the poem, the figures of speech, the point of view, the poet stone, the mood of the poem, poetic devices, and other um, stylistic devices that Hardy uses to strikingly reveal the persona's experience with the personified world. So essentially the poem is about nature and how the poetic voice um, interacts with nature in, in order that kind of close, very close, um, intense, um, intimate relationship. Let's dive in. Now let's begin by speaking about the poet Thomas Hardy. He was born on the 2nd of June, 1840. And he died on the 11th of January 1928. He was an English novelist and poet, a Victorian realist in the tradition of George Eliot. He was influenced both in his novels and his poetry by Romanticism, including the poetry of William Wordsworth. He was highly critical of much of Victorian society, especially on the declining status of rural people in Britain, such as those from his native southwest England. While Hardy wrote poetry, Throughout his life and regarded himself primarily as a poet, his first collection was not published until 1898. Initially, he gained fame as the author of novels such as Far From the Madding Crowd, The Mayor of Castle Bridge, Verse of the Orvilles, and Jude the Obscure. During his lifetime, Hardy's poetry was acclaimed by younger poets who viewed him as a mentor. So that's something like a brief note on um, the poet so usually i don't um, dwell too much on the poet um, because you're not going to be examined on them but you rather be examined on the poem and that's how the poem appears so if you observe the poem has three stanzas each of the stanzas is an octet standard stanza so octet means that each of the stanzas has eight lines so essentially the poem is um, 8 times 3, so 24 lines in, to, in total. So that's like the total um, um, lines of the poem. Now, when you look at the poem, for example, even the appearance of, on the page, you realize that every second, fourth, and eighth line in each of the stanzas is indented on both sides. So I'll speak about some of these things in the elements of, of literature analysis. So please listen to this analysis where... I analyzed the, the, the poem in situ, but then in the elements of literature, I, 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 I apply a, a note form kind of approach to the analysis. Now, let's begin the analysis. First, I, I read out the poem and then we begin. He never expected much by Thomas Hardy. Well, world, you have kept faith with me, kept faith with me. Upon the whole, you have proved to be much as you said you were. Since as a child, I used to lie upon the leaves and watch the sky. Never I own expected I that life would be all fair. It was then you said, and since I've said, time since I've said, in that mysterious voice you shared from clouds and hills around. Many have loved me desperately, many with smooth serenity, while some have shown contempt of me to the dropped underground. I do not promise over much, child, over much, just neutral tinted halves and such. You said to minds like mine, wise warning for your credit's sake, which I for one failed not to take, and hence could stem such strain and ache as each year might assign. So that's the reading of the poem. Now let's dive into the analysis directly. So observe that um, Hardy or the poetic voice opens the poem with the word well, which gives a sense of finality. You know, when he says well, usually it's like things have happened before, you know, and then it's just the concluding portion right so it gives a sense of finality and an end of era feel to the narration while also carries a tone of farewell or final goodbye parting and suggests that nothing more can be done finally well carries a tone of resignation so well or well that kind of you know it has a tone of resignation well what can i do kind of then after a comment that indicates a slight pause it adds world so observe that the poetic voice is speaking directly to the world now 
observe that the, the, there's a use of the capital W. Now, that's not the first word of, you know, usually if a first word is it's capitalized, there's nothing to it. But here, it's the second word, in fact, after a comma, it's been capitalized. It tells us that this is a proper noun. And this is important because the poetic voice wants us to know that he's speaking directly to a person or a personified world. So that's one of the first devices that we see, the use of personification. So it's a proper noun that indicates that he's speaking to a person. So it personifies the world and tells us that, see, I'm speaking directly to the world. So when I read this poem, for example, then I remembered the, the poem where, you know, the poet speaks about her mother and she personifies the year as well. So it talks about a quest to a year, that, that, that poem. So in the same sense, but here, even though in that poem, the, the year is personified, the why in the year is not capitalized, but here, the poetic voice or Hadi uses the capital W to indicate to the reader that here he's dealing directly with the personified world. Then after another comma that indicates another slight pause, he refers to the personified world with the second person pronoun you. So this tells us that, see, he's speaking directly to the world here in second person. He's having, he's speaking to it, you know, and this tells us that there's some sort of like a personal relationship with the world, so he can speak directly to it. Then after, then with a tone of gratitude, he adds, have kept faith with me. So, well, world, you have kept faith with me. So we, we hear the tone of gratitude. So it's, that, that, tells us that um, tells us that he receives support, loyalty, encouragement, presumably in times of great discouragement from the personified world. Care faith with me also suggests that there were times when, you know, he was in situations where the personified world would have been excused if he abandoned him. Because when he says care faith with me, it means there were times or um, presumably times of trial or trials. And because the world stuck with him or kept faith with him or remained loyal to him, for that he's very, very grateful. Care faith with me also communicates that Hadi or, again, the poetic voice and the personified world have fostered and enjoyed a long and close relationship. Finally, you have kept it with me. It's another way of saying that the personified world has supported, defended, and remained loyal to the poetic voice over a long period of time. And observe that the last word of the first line is me, which is the first person pronoun reference to the persona. So it says, see, it's not to somebody else. This is something that I've, I've received personally. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. So observe the use of the second person pronoun you and also the first person singular pronoun me as well to show that the, the poetic voice is speaking about his own experience. And it ends the line with a, with a comma, which indicates a short pause. Now, he indents the second line of the stanza before again repeating, right, just underneath the second word of the first line, kept faith with me. Now look at this. This is very, very important because for, the, for me, the indentation creates momentary pauses. Right? It's like creates momentary pause. So you have kept faith with me and then there's a pause. Maybe reflection of, you know, how he became emotional or it could also be that he wants it to sink to the, into the personal fire world that, you know, he's grateful. Right? Now, it's, then observe that he repeats the word kept faith with me a second time. So the word kept faith with me is repeated here a second time. So we see that that's the last four words of the first line. And it's also the, what is repeated in the second line as well. So that doubly shows that he is extremely grateful for the support, encouragement, and assistance that he has received from the personified world. And appreciates his loyalty to him. So you have kept faith with me, kept faith is like a refrain. Not just once. It's something that I feel deeply. And I, I want you to know, I want to communicate with my words that I'm grateful for the support I've received from you, world. Furthermore, his repetition of the exact four words, kept it with me a second time, is also striking because it creates the impression that he wants to echo his earlier statement. So he wants to say it again, you know, so that if it was unheard or unclear to the personified world when he first said it, the personified world will hear it now because it's been repeated. So that's also another effect that we see with the repetition, the emphasis of his appreciation and the fact that if it's something that the world didn't hear, at least now to hear it because he's repeated it. Thirdly, po the, the poet's repetition of the same word strikingly presents the death of his gratitude, the, the fact that he is intensely grateful to the world. 
And this also amplifies that he values the support that he received because sometimes you do something for somebody and the person does not um you know appreciate what you've done but he's saying here that you have kept it with me and i appreciate it and how do i appreciate it i'm repeating that see you've kept it with me he ends the line with a semicolon which indicates that he took a longer pause you know um the comma indicates a pause but then the semicolon is a longer pause so he paused because the thought of how much help he has received from the personified world made him emotional the semicolon also indicates that had these words in the first and second second lines is an independent clause. Now observe that there's another indentation as well in the second line as well. You see, so there's an indentation. Then in the third line, it begins by saying, "Open upon the whole," which shows that he is giving a retrospective assessment and overview of the world's performance to it, to the world. Upon the whole is also. Another way of him saying all things being considered. So on, upon the whole may be an expression that is unfamiliar to us. I mean, in the 21st century. But then when he says upon the whole, it's like he's saying all things being considered. When I think about everything, I mean, you prove to be as, um, as much as you said you were. Upon the whole also shows that Hadi is giving the person in fire world feedback on that, at least in that period, the totality of the relationship, how the relationship has been so far. You're going to see, for example, later on that the poetic voice tells us, you know, I'm, I use um, Hadi and then the poetic voice interchangeably, but then you can stick with the, the idea of the poetic voice because you are not certain if this was, this was Hadi's um, experience. But we see here that he's giving a retrospective, um, in, um, you know, assessment of the relationship that is had with the world to the world so it's not speaking to any other person so you're going to see the repetition of you multiple times in this in this stanza and then additionally we're going to see that the relationship has been there for a while because he's going to refer to himself that since as a child to tell us that see that's a relationship that has been there for a long 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 time so he goes on to say upon the whole also shows that hadi is giving the personified world feedback on the totality of their relationship to that point Upon the whole also highlights that although in general, the world is an imperfect place, one can make something great out of it. So the world is not perfect, but you can make something great out of it. That's what the poetic voice wants us to know. He concludes the third line with, you are proved to be. So you are proved to be. Now, then, using the enjambment seen in the pauseless flow of words from the third line into the fourth, he continues after, again, an, another indentation. So observe that the fourth line is also indented just like the second line. All right. So he continues much as you said you were. So it means the personified word said something to him about his nature. So when he says much as you said you were, suggests that in earlier times, the personified word verbally communicates its, communicated sorry, its personality traits to him or what it can do for him. And it has kept true to what is said about its nature. It has kept true to what it said about the, its nature, like the, the, the kind of um, personality that it is. Remember, the world here is personified. So, in Hadi's mind, on the, the, the mind of the poetic voice, there is evidence that the world keeps its word. So, you are proved to be much as you said you were. So, I talked about one of the key themes... Oh, I mentioned that one of the key themes that we see in the, in, the, in the poem is relationship with nature. The benefits of a relationship with nature. You're going to see for that, that for this poetic voice, it is, you know, quite a good relationship. So in the mind of the poetic voice, there's evidence that the world keeps its word. Furthermore, how this word shows that he wants the personified world to know that he's awarding it a pass mark. You've passed. What you did, upon the whole, you are proved to be much as you said you were. You keep your word. Finally, his comments in lines 4 and 5, upon the whole, you are proved to be as much as you said you were, shows that he considers the personified world a person with integrity. Because overall, that's, that's another word for upon the whole. So overall, that's a synonym for it as well. So overall, you've proved to be much as you said you were. So overall, it has done what a promise that it would do for him. That is, it has kept its word to him. So it has integrity. It's not um, a personality that runs away from the promises that he makes. It makes. Now, I mentioned that there were 
the, the second person pronoun used repeated multiple times in this stanza. So if you observe, the poetic voice refers to the world with the second person pronoun you. After he mentions the world, the, the, the world after he says world, world, the next thing that he does is you, you, you all through the poem. He, he no longer, or you, he, he, he no longer mentions the word world anymore. The assumption is that the world has been mentioned, the reader should be able to tie the, the pronoun together, that when he's, he refer, he's seeing you here, it's not speaking directly to the reader, but then to the personified world. So the poetic voice refers to the world with a second person pronoun you in lines one, three, and four. I've highlighted them there, which emphasizes that he's speaking directly to it. Also, his choice of words to the personified world shows that is giving uh, is giving it a it's um, a scorecard directly. So it's not something that he's saying to everybody, but then he's giving the scorecard of what he thinks the world is like to the world directly. Now, in the fifth and sixth lines of the stanza, I think employs flashback. That's another device that we see here as well. So now this is evidenced by his recounting of events from long ago. So his use of flashback also allows him to give the reader access to his past by transporting them to earlier times. That is, to his formative years. Now, furthermore, his tone in the line or in the lines creates the impression that he has shifted from speaking to the world, so he's no longer speaking to the world now, but he's speaking directly to the, to the reader. His language also creates the impression that he is audibly reminiscing about his past. So in the first four lines, he's speaking directly, giving the scorecard to, directly to the personified world. Now here, he shifts and then begins to tell the reader in the fifth and sixth line about, you know, um, the, the, the kind of why, when all of this started. Hello, Lena. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson so far. This is a sample video analysis of this poem. To access the full analysis, purchase it or the entire course with detailed analysis of all the 15 poems, the elements of literature in each poem, and IGCSE style questions, both passage-based and general. There are also A-star quality sample essays as well at mrquakersteaches.com. Find the links in the description. See you in class.